sounds more nice on the front than in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Now that is a proper good morning comrades. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring and welcome to the very first Mercedes AMG GT Black Series. Not the first one at the Nürburgring, but the first one probably that's going to get some adjustments. It just got delivered here by Bongard truck. Of course, no incidents involved. Bongard also does normal transportation, but it got delivered to our dear friend Lucas. Hello. And this building that used to have a Rentex sign. What happened to the sign? Well, we took it off. The decision was made uh, basically uh, already last year to uh, yeah, open up a new brand mm -hmm. for several reasons. And uh, we've been using the, uh, you know, this crisis also to adjust a few things uh, and uh, make some de decisions that were, uh, you know, like, will we, for example, stay with only the AMG brand, but more to say in a few moments. Yep. So, Black Series going inside. We're looking forward to it. We're going to put it on the lift, right? And yeah, have a closer yeah, yeah. look underneath. Obviously, so we can see the error and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, it's quite obvious right now already, it's way too silent for most of our customers. <laughs> so, uh, I can already say we have something not even planned by ready okay. to uh, to fit into this car we are happy actually to have really uh, one of the first uh, cars delivered here because uh, there have been some delivery um you know challenges. Uh, problems and challenges <laughs> with with covid and everything but yeah of course hi jan hi. how are you doing you. well as we can see so far only the sign is gone, so basically everything else remains the same. You yeah. will do Mercedes, you will do... Mainly, yeah. Can we, can we mention the name already? Uh, yeah, it's Opus Automotive. Mm -hmm. So uh, come by here, same location, different name, yeah. but same people, same mentality, everything exactly. else. Exactly. Not much has changed regarding this. It's just that, like, like I said before, uh, we've made a decision to um, yeah, open up our own brand and uh, it's not like we've been silent without any, any reason for that. Uh, we've been really working hard in the meantime and uh, doing a lot of stuff uh, in the background, so to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are the plans with the Black Series? Uh, obviously, we already have a prepared uh, stage one tune for it. Bigger turbos are uh, also on the shelf. Um, because the stock 700, 20 uh, or 8, 8? 30 or 40, yes, I don't remember, you know, PS, 730, yeah, yeah. PS and HP is also a little uh, different. Um, That's I mean, obviously not enough. <laughs> for most of the customers, it's not enough. I mean, this car has less than uh, the cars which are on the lifts over there, yeah. so uh, which are 760 or even uh, 900 horsepower. Um, in general, this setup, disregarding the flat crankshaft uh, on, on this engine, which is new, uh, this turbo upgrade setup, this is something we did already uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. So- um, Even before the Pro was released. You yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's still a GT, but a very special one as most of our viewers will, or your viewers uh, uh, will know. And uh, yeah, it's a limited car. Mm -hmm. uh, deliveries has, have just begun and uh, I mean what's quite nice is really to see um, many of the bits that usually uh, some people might have seen on, on a GT3 race car already especially when it comes to to the front section here with the way you know uh, the cooler is uh, installed the way the, the air is going through the intercoolers and going out of, of uh, the bonnet. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to have the car on the dyno, hopefully even today, mm -hmm. um, at least for, for first uh, run to see, uh, you know, what numbers we can get out of it. But um, yeah. I'm excited. So basically, uh, 
the most of the work will be done to the engine, of course, because yeah. that's what your customers are yeah. uh, requesting. Uh, I mean, horsepower is never enough. I'll, I'll give them that. And actually, Lucas has proven in the past that he can make the ho high horsepower numbers work on the Nürburgring with the, with previous projects, the GTR Pros, etc. So, um, also when necessary, you will adjust also the suspension if it will be required, the, the yeah, brakes. I mean, but some parts are still new to us regarding this car. I've been waiting really to get uh, uh, the first car in here for for really too long mm -hmm. because um, the liveries should have started already in um, yeah November and December last year. But uh, I think just one or two cars worldwide have been delivered just before, um, just before uh, Christmas. And then uh, deliveries have stopped for various reasons. Um, mm -hmm. We can go more into detail regarding this car, uh, uh, basically when we see it also on the lift. Yeah, I think we should do that. First, I want to, where's the, is this the, is the key in here? I want to see the, the mileage. I think a lot of people want to. Ah. Yeah, it's on, uh, basically ah. just, just an information on the side. This car has not the bucket seat, seats because this is, so to say, the, um, yeah, you can see the mileage. 24 kilometers. <laughs> yeah, it's really brand new. So it just has been delivered as uh, we could see. And um, it smells new as well. <laughs> yeah, because it is. <laughs> what this car is basically missing, and I think uh, the typical spec, will be um, the bucket seats and the titanium cage. Mm -hmm. we, this car doesn't have it for a good reason, because we are going to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, because we are going also to develop um, our own roll bar mm. and uh, roll cage uh, for those customers, like the American market, for example, which don't have the option even to, to uh, you know, uh, choose the cage, the, yeah, the because, cage, because, because no, no. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. same with GT2 RS. It, it's the same with the seats. You can't get the bucket seats in the US. Uh -huh. And uh, I think in Canada, I'm not sure about Australia, to be honest, mm -hmm. but some parts of the world are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. yeah? So uh, this is why this car has the spec, so we can give customers the option also to, to you know, retrofit um, stuff they can't get from factory. Makes sense, makes sense. So you, you, you got the, the, the normal seat so you can see yeah. if your system is going to work exactly. with the normal because, seats. Because, you know, in the depending US. on uh, the four point harness, where the, the belt should go, and this and that. So uh, we already did it. Um, we also have a retrofit uh, cage for the normal GT, GTS. Some customers who, who are running a GTS uh, or both a used GTR want to have, uh, uh, you know, self retrofitted and don't always want to go with the factory stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are just continuing doing what we did already in the past. And uh, I mean, I can even show you, it's, it's possible to do it here on the A-Class. We know this car from yeah. last year. And now it has nice bucket seats fitted also. Nice. Yeah, this is something that we were missing during our lap. <laughs> well, as the car is being prepared to go on the lift, and some other stuff. We remember this car, we rem remember some of those cars. We saw this car at REM, I believe. Um, this car we haven't seen before, because nope. there is something special about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up with those race seats? Yeah, basically uh, this customer is using the car mainly <laughs> for track days. So uh, the wish was not only to get the uh, roll cage fitted, Mm -hmm. uh, but also to go with proper race seats. I mean, it's still a heavy Why boat. Why not? <laughs> yeah. I think there's also like some big wing missing. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> you, you know, if, if you want to drive it on the car, you can just uh, uh, put it down. Yeah, interesting. Well, and the final thing, before we're gonna actually put it on the lift, one thing I noticed that I haven't seen it before, Aston Martin. Yeah. And nowadays it's kind of obvious because they're running AMG engines, I think also in Formula One, they're going to be running AMG engines. I to be believe. honest, I don't even know which engines they're going to run, but I think... Yeah, yeah. and to AMG bought 20% of stake in Aston Martin anyway, yeah. so it makes sense that you as an AMG tuner will be doing something to this, I assume, yep. and seeing... It's already, been, it's already been done. I don't want to open up the hood, but uh, basically you can imagine uh, some stuff that you could see here, yeah. like twin-scroll turbos already fitted into this car. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean. 
the difference between the GT and the Aston, uh, the Vantage V8 and also the DB11 with this uh, V8 engine from AMG is uh, mainly that this engine inside here is um, the C63 engine. So mm -hmm. it's not a dry sump, uh, come, uh, you know, dry sump engine like uh, on the GT models, but basically this exact engine, mm. like if you can see it here. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a, a C63 engine. Okay, okay. It's called internally M177 LS1, Leistungsstufe mm. 1. Okay. <clears throat> basically the, the, the first power stage. And so that's a four liter or? That's still a four liter. The, the four yeah. li still the four liter and the eight cylinder and yeah, not still. the four cylinder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, let's see. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, as, exactly. Yeah. That, that's the uh, answer. So, should we put it on the lift, I guess? Or uh, yeah, something? basically, we're just checking, you know, uh, the car already for software updates because nowadays you can even have <laughs> the thing that you get the car delivered from the factory, but it's not up to date oh, wow. because it was built last year. Then uh -huh. it was, you know, blocked at the production plant in Sindelfingen. <laughs> uh, uh, B because uh, you know there there has been some some time in between. It can happen that you get a new car, but it's not up to date. Hmm. So we are already checking for updates. Well, cool. Well, let, let's check for updates, and I would say fast forward when the car is on the lift because I'm very excited to see what is underneath the car. One thing, by the way, look at that. There are even aerodynamic elements to guide the air inside the engine. That's like really crazy. A shark fins. Anyhow, software was up to date? Software is up to date, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's quite important because uh, it doesn't make sense to um, start tuning a car based on an old software when every other customer car will be updated. So uh, this was quite important for us to know if the car is up to date. Mm -hmm. Nice. So now we can have a look underneath. Probably we're going to see lots of flat things, but also lots of extra aero curtains. Starting with here. Oh, it's made of rubber. Yeah, I, I am quite sure if you go through the carousel. You'll you be very happy. To, you may need to maybe even, you know, get a few new ones depending on how often you go uh, through the carousel. So yeah, that, that's a very good, good thing. Oh, no. There's a spider. The first <laughs> Black Series spider in the world, probably the only one. It needs to go out on the track as soon as possible. You already... Okay, anyhow, on the back, is there anything that we, you can see in terms of the suspension design? Uh, well, yeah, this is the new, completely new suspension which was made for, uh, for the Black Series. Mm -hmm. And this car compared to the Pro and the other GTR models, is missing the active steering for the rear. So as you can see, this is a solid part. Mm -hmm. uh, what's also new is this cooling system. Okay. We had something similar made. So in this case, we don't need to have a retrofit aftermarket part built. Okay, so here, this one, nice. Yeah, that's also new. Mm -hmm. So that you don't have on the GTR or GTR Pro yeah. models. There's no cooling at all for mm -hmm. the back. Yeah, you were saying when you had the Pro, I think two years ago when you got it, that the Cooling was a big issue on the yep. GTRs yep. and also on the pros there was none and here you have it. Yeah, this is uh, also way bigger than okay. it was before. Mm -hmm. You can also see it's uh, even made of three parts now. So uh, this is also new, basically like on a proper race car. Okay. Oh yeah. Wow, Th they really thought about it. That's good. Yeah. Carbon fiber sway bar. Yes. Is that also uh, different from the Pro uh, Basically, the Pro already had this. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's the same part number at the moment, mm -hmm. but uh, this is new. Uh, what's also new? The subframe here is new. Uh, it's, a, it's a lighter one because the old one was made from steel. Mm -hmm. um, the exhaust system is very similar. As you can see, this is a model with particle filters. So we have particle filters here and cats up there. There is mm -hmm. also an export market version where here you don't have particle filters but mm -hmm. you have cats also from factory these cars are a little bit louder than the european models or the models which will be delivered to other countries with the particle filters of course but still it's not loud enough i already have you know coast 
from customers like, okay, I'm getting my Black Series soon. When can I come? <laughs> I need to, uh, you know, to have some sound. And what's also new, this time they didn't go with a titanium silencer, mm -hmm. like uh, on the Pro and the GTR, where basically this was just standard steel from here. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was a titanium silencer. This time they went with a, a thinner uh, steel uh, exhaust system. Yeah. Do you think it has to do maybe with something with weight distribution or? To be honest, uh, I don't really know the reason for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can see there's a, a different exhaust setup compared to the uh, GTR, yeah. where you don't have uh, any more the you know exhaust system uh, in a way that you have this this mid silencer and the left and right. Mm -hmm. but uh, it's basically the way it was before already on, on the GTS. However, okay. I think this has uh, aerodynamic reasons mm. because you can see, um, I mean, aerodynamic was made properly on, on this car. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think maybe even with this old setup, the, the fuser, the way it's made here now, just wouldn't have worked. Yeah. This is my guess. Yeah. I like this really that, that they thought of it of making it just simple rubber and replaceable because the first time when I saw the, these type of things were on 720S and we're like, oh my God, some extra curtains on the bottom, but they were made of plastic and you can imagine as Lucas said that when you go through the carousel or any other, yeah, uneven surface on the track in any other racetrack in the world, that it might become costly. So this is smart. I like it. Thinking of... Uh, being able to replace it very easy. Well, not even having the necessity to replace it because it's just flexible. And yeah, so I guess at, at, after some time of, of heavy usage on the racetrack, it will just be, you know. Oh, um, we have yeah. some clips here on the... Yeah, these clips, this is the de detachable uh, part for the front. So basically you can, uh, you know, take out the lip mm -hmm. here and uh, you have to screw uh, a special holder here you may have seen it on some uh, pictures, press mm. pictures. So it's not, th this is the uh, road legal setup. Yeah. And if you go on the racetrack, you will basically open up this, take this out and you have to, uh, yeah, screw additional bars to it. There's, this is the holder for that. Nice. Oh, easy. And, and also a nice feature, what I think is different. Uh, I don't think it's, because of weight reduction, because of better cooling, you can just take this uh, license plate off and you, you still have, you know, the that's air good. coming through. Oh yeah, the, the tri gear option. Yeah. That, that's good. Very, very smart, very, very, very well engineered. I guess that's pretty much it when it comes to the bottom of the car. We covered, I guess, it. So what's the plan now? Yeah, the plan now is basically to, to read the data from the car mm -hmm. and then, uh, yeah, run it in and go to the dyno. Cool, well, let's go to the dyno. Not quite, because there are a couple of things that we still want to show you. Uh, what do we start with? Yeah, basically this. The, the splitter, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you move it like this. And then you have to put this holder here in place. Otherwise, um, ah. you know, there is so much downforce on this part that it may break uh, otherwise. Nice. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's like a real GT3 race car. Yeah, basically it is, you know, you just screw it in. Yeah. Obviously you need a tool to do it properly. Yeah, 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 and yeah. then it's being held in place. Oh yeah, wow. But it's, it's not fitted properly right now. Of but, course, of course, but still. Yeah. Okay, C can you slide it back in? I just want to yeah, show sure. the, the difference. It's, it's quite significant. I would say it's like, well, like what, 10 centimeters? Yeah, I need, I need to go through the paperwork again of this car. Uh, but to be honest, uh, I'm sure this makes really a huge difference regarding mm -hmm. downforce uh, with it being inside or outside. Yeah, can you, can you slide it in just to show the difference from this angle? Easy as that. Nice. And we found something else in the trunk in the meanwhile. Yeah, we didn't even talk about this. Oh no. Well, let's talk I about this then. Yeah this active aerodynamic part. Obviously, uh, you know, for street uh, legal reasons, especially in Europe, you can't make a wing much wider than it, this one is. Aww. So in order to, to get more downforce onto this surface, obviously it's an active part. Yeah. 
and uh, you know it will also go in if you go high speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dr drag like three hundred plus. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, the funny thing is the black one. Yeah, there. So what is this? Some. Yeah, you can adjust the camber. How? Uh, in this it's case, like a Lego block to me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> basically, uh, you know, on, on the older models, you could you could uh, get the individual parts uh, fitted, um, but you, you had to buy them individually. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you can see this way that uh, you know this car is really track focused. Yeah, I also like this idea because uh, I remember in the past when we have been. Uh, running a few cars with, for example, GT4 wings, uh, there was usually a problem that these plastic parts here were just breaking hmm. under the force. Wow. Well thought of. Ah, just for the front axle. Okay, so the rear is still as it was before. Mm, okay. Yeah. One more final thing that we want to mention. The tires. As you know, the AMG GT Black Series comes now with an optional Cup 2R tires, which were also used to set the Nürburgring lap record for the fastest production car. Um, they also have very nice logo that looks like an AMG GT Black Series. There's actually a bit more behind it, right? Yeah, um, I think this is the first time Mercedes is actually really offering two types of a Cup 2R. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, originally the plan was already to have a Cup 2R ready for the Pro, but um, for whatever reason it was never made. So the only option for the Pro now is also to go with the Cup 2R from the Black Series. It's a slightly different size, but I still think it will work. We have ordered already some tires and we'll test one of our pros on the Nürburgring shortly with the Cup 2R. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, you can have the GT Black Series optionally also with a harder compound. Okay, so, because that's the M01A? Yeah, there is basically, exactly, there is a the delivery spec, which is the softer compound. Nice. But <laughs> if you want to have a harder compound, then you can get it, but only exclusively through AMG or directly or AMG performance centers. Yeah, so basically for uh, people who want to store their car in a garage and never run on track, the harder compound is for you. If you want to track <laughs> it, <laughs> then you uh, put the softer one, just showing the tire sizes. That's pretty much it. There's one nearly, thing. Yeah. Nearly, yeah, exactly. While we were walking in, I saw this car looks a bit more different than the regular Pro, starting with the, the front. Basically, this is stock. It just it looks is. different because the license plate uh, is missing. Ah, we are okay. just about to sell this car. Uh, but yeah, this is the special bit. So the, re uh, the, the carrier, the wheel carrier and the hub and everything, and also especially the brake uh, is from the GT4. Mm from the GT4 race car. And this uh, car is also equipped with a uh, different suspension. So mm -hmm. uh, the original GTR Pro suspension is made by KW yep. for, uh, for AMG. But in this case, we are going with an uh, Erlin suspension, okay. four-way adjustable, uh, so a proper race uh, setup on this specific car. Mm -hmm. Nice. Any other cars we need to cover? Uh, pff, well, you know, as you can see, we are still, so to say, home of a GT, of the AMG GT. Uh, this car is getting some uh, light modifications. Uh, one of the very few cars which, at least for now, is not getting a, a tune. Okay. But, you know, <laughs> a brake upgrade, uh, a different suspension already. Uh, we've retrofitted the brake cooling. Uh, this is for now just a stock setup and uh, this yellow car below will have 900 horses very soon. Nice. And as you can see, we have meanwhile mounted the license plate on the Black Series and uh, I guess you can, you can see or someone can guess that the 1001 number will also stand for something. Oh, really? Wow, I'm excited for that. <laughs> and excited for the laps to follow. And excited yeah. for the dyno content to follow to prove it. And speaking of the dyno content, now we are going to the dyno.
No, one final detail. We have the car outside because uh, Bora has arrived in the meanwhile to shoot the thumbnail, just the pictures in general. And while we were shooting the interior, we found out that the car comes with, of course, the AMG performance pack. The track base, I believe, is the official name. And look what you can do. You have the bridge to gantry track layout. So, yep. I mean, of course, I will be the last person to tell you to go and uh, lap time yourself or anything during Touristenfahrten, but it's a nice small detail. The only thing is that you don't have the, the full VLN configuration, but there are no track days. No, there, sometimes there are track days that run the full configuration also on Touristenfahrten. Sometimes you have the full layout of the GP track and uh, the Nordschleife combined, but that's, that's nice. Just small little detail. Sounds more nice on the front than in the back. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. All right, have fun. Thanks. <laughs> bye bye. See you. And that's it for today's video. We are not going to go full load, full crazy to see how much horsepower it actually produces. So I'm sorry for that because you've seen the car is brand new. It has still, the engine needs to be broken in. And this is what Lucas will be doing today for the rest of the day, breaking in the engine on the dyno and also reading out the ECU because the car is not PPF. That's why he's not doing it on the road. So why not? But hey, stay tuned. Soon there will be lots of upgrades coming on the car. We'll be taking it out on the track. You know, subscribe, like, share. But it was already very cool to have a first look in detail on the first Black Series that is going to be soon having over 1,000 horsepower and going very fast on the ring. Very much looking forward to that. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. For the food chat while we're waiting for the data of the ECU being read, Lucas made some cupcakes. My girlfriend. Yeah, sure. It's you. <laughs> Man of many talents. Tune an AMG and make a cupcake with apple and nuts. Yep. Nice. It's even low carb. Mm.